I felt like my life was just a gamble, allowing food to drive every decision that I made. You know, I was in a very corporate, uh, corporate world going through a major acquisition. In a time where I needed to be on my A game, I was dropping the ball, drowning in my own water retention and inflammation and ultimately like my own fat cells. It was terrible. That's where I realized that there was a serious mental addiction going on because I was convincing myself that everything was okay. Part of my call to action was my wife looking me square in the face and just being like, Thomas, you, like, you come home, but you don't really come home. It's just like this has become a functional addiction. Now I had uh, you know, some third parties that were in my life that actually changed how I looked at food. You know, a lot of it was the fact that I managed over 1,200 physicians and these physicians were amazing doctors and they saw me, they saw me unhealthy. And sometimes it took mentors and people that I respected to actually give me physiological examples of what was going on in my body. So that helped me out knowing that, okay, maybe this isn't all my fault. It pacified this like voice in my brain that was just saying like there's something wrong, there's something wrong with you mentally, there's something wrong. They were explaining like no, no, I mean the weight was one thing. What you have going on the way of inflammation in your body is making it so that you can't think clear. If you're addicted to food, you can't just avoid food. You're always having to face it head on. Well, sometimes it gets even more difficult because then you get frustrated because then you have to take away these things that you've now enjoyed and you're left with this delta of like happiness gap. Like you don't have this like, you were here because you had food coming in and helping you, but now you're consciously aware of it. So you take away the food and now you consciously have to bring your self-esteem and everything down for a little while. The sugar industry and everything has made these foods so hyper palatable, where it's just, it tastes so good that you actually develop an additional secondary physical response. It started with some need to fill a void. The emotional addiction started like that. The physical addiction compounded over weeks, months, and the next thing you know, you just have no idea what you're doing. That's when you need a pattern interrupt. So getting in touch with your body is really the most important thing. You know, it's the only thing we've got. It's our temple, it's everything. That loss of control is what just destroys everybody. But if you can commit to seven days of just getting the processed foods out of your diet, suddenly you start feeling the way that certain foods affect you. When you start feeling every single thing that you put in your body, at least to a better degree, that's how you can start to make better decisions. Now when I consume that sugar, my body is repulsed. My brain sees it entirely different now. It's, it's physiological and it's mental. The struggle is now less about being able to just overcome food addiction in general and more so about being able to like, okay, where can I find good quality foods? Where can I find good quality things that I can put in my body? And one of the only ways that you can actually start combating that is to have valid substitutes. So I'm not saying that you should abstain from all these amazing tasty foods, that you have to enjoy food. The healthiest that I've ever been has been when I'm consciously aware of what I'm putting in my body, but I'm still enjoying what I eat. I feel in control of my life, and that's what matters. I was never in the driver's seat until I took control of my health, period.